Okay, in this follow-up video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a Z-Depth Render Map and then use that map to control the depth of field of the camera. So what is the depth of field? Depth of field can be used to control the focus of the object in your rendered scene. So I've created these posts here in greater distances from one from each other so that you can see later when we generate the depth map we can use that to control the focus now before we control the focus we need to turn on the HUD okay so go to your display hits up display and turn on the object details so when you click on a particular object in this case the subject okay you can see the distance that is being shown here from distance from the camera so if I click on these posts here you can see the successive distance will increase because each of these these posts are further away from the camera so for example if I want my main subject to be in focus I should be using the value of 7.116 okay let's go back to our render layers so this is the render layers that I previously set up. Now I want to create another render layer with all the objects in this scene. And I want to create a depth, okay, or a Z-depth map. So first I need to select all the objects. Okay. And then I'm going to click on this add all objects into a new render layer button. And then I'm going to rename this layer and I'm going to call it Z-Depth okay and I guess I should bring in the light as well so I'm going to select the light in my outliner view here then I'm going to right mouse click and add selected object so I can see everything okay once you have done that while the layer render layer is selected click on layers and click on attributes click on the presets okay the presets button over here and then choose the function or the preset that states luminance depth so when you select luminance depth you will notice everything turns white because we need to set the range to generate the z depth map so currently the range is too far away so to set the range you click on the set range path Okay, and you notice that the maximum range right now is 10,000 uh, Maya units. So we need to reduce this by a large margin. Now, if you look at the numbers, they're now highlighted yellow. That means it is connected to another node here. So we need to break these two nodes, the minimum and the maximum. So I'm going to right mouse click on the numbers and click on break connection. I'm going to do it to the maximum value as well and break the connection. And right now, the maximum value, I want to change this to 7. Okay, so which is the value of our airplane in focus. So 7, so that means that uh, it will focus the range around here. Okay, where you can see this highlight that is being shown here. Now, if you can't see this rendering, make sure you're in the textured mode. Okay. So if you're not in texture mode, you won't be able to see this. Okay, so basically that is done. I mean, you already set the range, the distance. Now, if you ever want to go and change your distance again, make sure you select your channel box uh, render layer editor. Click on layers. Click on attributes. And under the member overrides, click on this output node here. And click on the out color. And then you can get back to setting your distance again. Now, if you want the focus distance to be greater from uh, from 7, okay, so if I enter 8, you can see now the focus distance has increased, okay, to this range. So everything in the black range will be out of focus. Okay, everything in the brighter range will be in focus. Or later, as you can see, when we bring this information into Photoshop, we can actually adjust the focal distance. Okay, so I think 8 is good enough. Right, so I'm going to render this layer together with the rest of the layers that I have done. 
So I can preview the render by disabling the layers here by clicking on this clapperboard and when you see a faint yellow cross on it that means that these layers will not be rendered. I'm going to click on the render setting and then I'm going to ensure that I'm rendering in mental ray and then I'm going to click on the render button here to do a test render. Okay, and I should get this image here. So this image I'll be using in Photoshop as my Z depth. So right now I'm going to re-enable all my layers. Okay, and I'm going to check my render settings. Make sure that I'm rendering into a PSD layered file. Okay, I'm using the default uh, resolution here, and I'm rendering my camera one. Okay, which I already set this up. Okay, so go to the rendering settings, click on render and click on batch render and Maya will render all the entire sequence from the ground, the shadow, the diffuse, specular, ambient occlusion and all the way to ZDEP. So I'm going to click on a script editor here to monitor the rendering progress. Okay so it's now starting with the ground then it's going to start with the uh, shadow then the diffuse and the specular and now the ambient occlusion okay which is taking a little bit longer because I'm using a high sampling rate and finally the Z depth and the rendering is done so it should have rendered into a Photoshop file so I'm going to go into my images folder And there is the image that is being rendered. Okay, there you go. This is the one. I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. And here you can see the Z depth is rendered in a normal blending, blending mode. So if I hide this layer by clicking on the eye, you can see all the rest of the layers are combed properly. And uh, right now, I just want to adjust the shadows a little bit. I'm going to bring down the brightness. Okay, and uh, perhaps increase the brightness of my diffuse by going to the filter. First, select the layer. Then click on filter. Or rather, click on image. Go to adjustments. And apply a brightness and contrast. So I'm going to make the diffuse a little bit brighter. Now, if for some reason you want to adjust all the entire layers from AO all the way to the ground. Now, for the background, this black background, I don't need this, so I'm going to throw this away. Okay, I already noticed something uh, that is not right about the renders because the render posts are not added into the render. So, I might have to re-render this again. In fact, I have to render this again. Okay, because I haven't added these render posts. If I go to the master layers, because these I just added earlier. I haven't added this into all the layers here. So I'm going to select all these render posts in my outliner. Okay, select one and shift select all. Then I'm going to right mouse select the individual layers. Okay, I'm going to just add them in the diffuse. Okay, maybe add, add them in as a shadow as well. Okay, and for the ground, I'm not going to put them in the ground layer. Specular, yep. Add them in the specular. Ambient occlusion, yes. Add these objects as well. And then for the Z depth, definitely add these objects. Okay, so let's try doing the render again. So render, batch render. And we're going to overwrite the file. And again, I'm going to monitor this. So we'll wait for mental ray to kick in and start to render the layers. So again, we are rendering the ground. And then the shadow. Okay, the shadows should now include the the distant post which I placed there. Now we'll find out when we open up the Photoshop layers. Ambient inclusion and then the Z depth. 
and then we're done so let's go back to Photoshop again and then I'm going to reopen the file first I'm going to close this by clicking on the cross tab I don't want to save this then I'm going to reopen the file and there you go I now I have all the posts rendered and in fact the posts have all the shadows and ambient occlusion included as well so this time I'm just going to add a adjustment layer uh, on top of the AO all the way to the ground I don't need the background okay I'm gonna throw the background away just dump it in the bin and then I'm going to add a adjustment layer which is indicated by this button here so click on it and then choose brightness and contrast so right now this brightness and contrast is above the AO and it's going to affect all the layers below everything here so go to the properties okay and then you can now adjust so it's going to apply the brightness across all the layers and again for the shadow I can individually adjust the shadow by clicking on shadow then clicking on image adjustments brightness and contrast I'm gonna just reduce the well actually for the shadow I can just adjust the brightness of it by adjusting the opacity okay, I do not want the shadow to be too, uh, so harsh okay and then for the diffuse I want the diffuse to be a little bit brighter Okay, I'm going to try using curves instead to adjust the brightness. Okay, the specular. And let's say I want to change the specular into a different color. I can select the specular layer, go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, and then enable colorize. I'm just going to give it a purple hue. Okay, so now I can see the specular is now reflecting this purplish hue. And for the ambient occlusion, I'm seeing some noise here, so I'm going to apply some filter to blur it out. Now, again, all these filters are optional. It's really depending on the kind of effect that you want. Okay, so the good thing about rendering in all these separate layers is that you can tweak each individual layers separately without having to re-render re them all again. And this is, this is especially useful when you're doing um, an image sequence or you're rendering a turntable. So now we are left with the Z depth. Okay, let's say we are finished done with the editing. We are going to combine all these layers together. So I'm going to select the adjustment layer, shift, and then select all the layers, right mouse click, and then merge the layers together. Okay, so right now, okay, I need to, wait, let me just undo that. I forgot to select the ground. I'm supposed to merge the layers, including the ground together. So now we have two layers, the Z depth, which I've hidden by clicking on this eyeball, Okay, the Z depth is still not affecting the focals or focus of the image yet. So we we need to use the Z depth and then we need to copy this and paste it in the channel tab here as an alpha channel. So first we need to go back to layers, select the Z depth uh, layer or the path that we have rendered, press Ctrl A to select all, and then press Ctrl C to copy this image then go to channels click on the create new channel and because we already have the RGB channels so the new channel will automatically be named as alpha 1 so while this alpha 1 is selected press ctrl V to paste the Z depth into the alpha 1 now go back to layers and we can hide the Z depth in fact we don't really need the Z depth now but we're gonna leave it here for for the time being click on the merged layers okay go to filter choose blur and choose the lens blur function okay so by default if you never apply any mask okay and you adjust the blur right it will become progressively progressively more blur all over the image now this is not the result that we want we want to use the z depth to control the focus for example we want this to be more focused the front it to be more in focus and the back to be not so uh, to be out of focus so the source of the image we can actually change it here the depth map and because we really we've have already placed the depth map into the alpha one we're going to choose alpha one and now this time we can use the slider to control the focus notice that now the nose of the aircraft is in focus however as you progressively progressively look behind 
the things are going to get less and less in focus. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit more. Okay, and once I'm happy with this, I just click OK. So it's going to apply the blur based on the Z depth we have provided. And then we ended up with an image with a depth of depth of field effect. Okay, so this will give a much more re realistic feel to your renders. And right now, this feels like it's a miniature object or a model on the table. Okay, and this is how you set up the Z depth map. Okay, from rendered from Maya and to be used as a uh, image to control the depth of field.